idea of, of Leica being the first stop motion studio? The, the genesis of of Leica is rooted in in the, the Portland, Oregon animation community. Uh, there was a company that was here, uh, you know, thirty some odd years years ago called Vinton Studios, and uh, a company that was, that was primarily focused on doing you know television commercials and short films and that sort of thing. And uh, you know, I I had worked uh, with that company for 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 years, and when the um, the advertising market crashed after 9-11, uh, the company went under. It was insolvent. And so from the ashes of what was that company, we, we rebuilt the company into what became ultimately uh, like a uh, like a Inc. Like a, you know, we have we have a, a couple different uh, levels of the company. We have our entertainment division and which does our feature films and then we have our short form work for hire division which does our television commercials. And that's that was kind of the, the the genesis of this place. When you think about some motion, you think about England, and you think, you think about uh, Czechoslovakia mm -hmm. in, in the times of the Iron Curtain. So, uh, did you have that in mind when you came up with this studio and said, "Okay, we want to do this, this big uh, stop motion, but in America"? Yeah, uh, uh, Portland has a tradition of stop motion. It's one of the few places on earth where it's it's, it's an art form that's thrived, um, and it was something that I'd loved since I was a child. Um, and when we were forming the company, it you know there were a lot of animation studios, a lot of animation houses out there, most of them focusing on CG animation because that ten, that's kind of the coin of the realm these days. That's how most of the most of these things are done in, in computer graphics. Um, but we had a history in doing stop motion, and and we felt that it was it was a medium that was largely untapped. That it had you know this kind of inherent warmth and charm and kind of magic in in, in the way these things are made, but it uh, it hadn't evolved significantly in the hundred years since it was formed, and so what we decided to do was to try to effectively embrace the author of stop motion's purported demise, which is the computer. How can we integrate technology into the, which is essentially just a, a handcrafted process? And so by you know taking bits of technology and 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 techniques from the stage and from the wood shop and from the machinist shop and from all these different places and fusing them all together in this place that we developed, uh, we came up with a really interesting, unique way of making films. And I think it's why a Leica film looks unlike anything else out there, because it is a, a, a hybridization, a fusion of all different types of filmmaking techniques in one place. Is there a place where you draw the line between stop motion and, and CGI, for example, we say, okay, this could be easier done in CGI, but I would prefer stop motion. So where's the line in that? Yeah, I mean, you you want to have for any film, you want to have a unified vision, no matter how it's done. You want it to all look like it came from you know two sets of hands and and or, or one set of hands and from one brain. You want it to look like it had you know there's an artistic point of view behind it. And so anytime you have different techniques involved in making a film, you can run the risk of it looking like it's just this it's just this kind of crazy quilt of things and it doesn't all kind of merge together. And so it has to look like it has a unified point of view. Um, and what we what we decide is that you know at, at the core at the foundation of our films they are stop motion films, but we're not slavish to kind of the purity of that. It's like whatever whatever uh, tool makes the most sense in order to kind of to to, to dramatize uh, the story in the best way. That's what we'll use. And so sometimes that means you know someone building something with cardboard and hot glue. Other times that means you know printing something with a rapid prototyping machine. And other times that means doing a CG visual effect. Um, there are certain things that are very difficult to do in the medium of stop motion um, because things have to be physically built. Having big, large, expansive sets is challenging, and so uh, oftentimes we'll use CG to kind of to build out the world, to, to, you know, for digital matte paintings and that sort of thing. Oftentimes we'll we'll use it to uh, populate the world with crowds because crowds are very difficult to do in stop motion. Um, but you know whatever whatever technique makes the most sense. One of the things that I'm most happy about, most proud of, in, in what we've done was the character of Aggie on Paranorman, because she was a, a character that couldn't have been done in any other way, in any other place than the way we did her here. Which she started life as a as a hand drawn bit of animation. She went through uh, rapid prototyping, was printed out. We we shot her as a puppet on stage. Then we put CG effects on top of that and hand-drawn effects on top of that. So it was all forms of animation combined into one character in a way that was just this kind of remarkable, stunning thing. 
and and nowhere else could that character have been made. And so I think that highlights how we do things. Just whatever tool makes the most sense to be the most impactful. Mm -hmm. the, the, that's a common denominator between uh, Coraline, Paranorman, and, and the Box Trolls. That is, it's not only for kids. It has this uh, darkness, this quickness that isn't found in, in, in other, uh, not stop motion, but any animated film. Mm. It's, it's, I imagine it's done on purpose. Yeah, it's, you know, the way we make films is sort of reminiscent uh, of the way that, that Disney did films back in the, in the 40s and 50s, uh, which is, you know, when films had a, a kind of an artful balance of darkness and light, of intensity and warmth. And, you know, from our perspective, that's just good storytelling, having that kind of dynamism, going through this giant emotional range of, of experience. And at the end of it, you're, the audience is kind of enriched from that experience. Um, you know, I think in modern in the modern era of animation and in family films, just generally, uh, you don't that tends to not be the case. Things tend to be kind of uh, you know tamped down on. The, the rough edges are just kind of filed off, and the kind of the uneven lines are straightened. And we don't have that that really dynamic storytelling in so in so much of uh, uh, animation or in entertainment targeted at families. And so it's a, it's a long tradition that we still hold on to. We think that is, it is the best way to tell a story. And so each of our films, while they may be different from each other, will share that in common, that, that blend of darkness, light, intensity, and warmth, and, and just good storytelling. What are your influences in stop motion? Well, uh, you know, for me, growing up, the, the, the biggest influence for, I think, any stop motion an animator is always going to be Ray Harryhausen. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, he was the guy who basically perfected this technique that had just been kind of kind of squirreling around in, in its infancy and then w with the hands of this master it became something else. It sh it, he showcased that you could do so much more with this medium than had been done to that point. So he's the big one. Um, you know, obviously there there are some incredible uh, filmmakers in stop motion. Uh, Henry Selleck is one of them and I had the, 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 great, the great blessing to, to work with him and develop a project with him on, on Coraline and he's been a, a tremendous influence on both me and the, the foundations, the very DNA of this company. Um, but beyond just uh, animation, you know, I think we, t we tend to look at just really dynamic filmmakers out there that, that, that do things differently, that, that don't necessarily have kind of a, a, a they're, not, they're not kind of caught in a stylistic ghetto where they tend to do the same kinds of things over and over again. People like the, the Coen brothers who do dramatically different kinds of films, people like Danny Boyle who do dramatically different kinds of films, but always with a very, very kind of pointed, uh, uh, personal point of view and the way they tell their stories. And so those are the types of places that we draw our inspiration from because we do not want a house style. We do not want to repeat ourselves. We want each film to be distinct from each other and have its own un unique personality and, and point of view. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, good luck. Thanks. <laughs>